Hi, this is Sweet June coming back at you with another video topic. I want to talk about watching some stuff here on YouTube, and I think that uh, um, I want to share some information with you know I like I say I talk about a lot about single motherhood. As I stated in other videos, um, I spent the many years being a single mom, and um, so I spent many years being a single mom and everything. So I know a lot about it. I'm an expert on it. So um, I want to share with the single mothers out there the, and they probably don't want to hear it, but somebody need to hear it. <laughs> Single motherhood, the importance of single mothers abstaining from sex. That's what I'm going to talk about. Now, I'm going to get a little candid in this video. So, but I'm, you know, I'm always keep it clean, but I'm getting a little candid. Um, talk a little bit about my experience. Um, but I'm going to keep it, you know, I'm about keeping it 100. So I'm going to get a little candid on you. So. No, I, I feel like the reasons why I feel like it's important for single mothers to abstain from, and I know a lot of single mothers don't want to hear that, particularly if they're not Christian. Everybody's not a Christian. Everybody's not trying to live by the Bible. Everybody's not trying to serve God. And so I know a lot of single mothers out here probably don't want to hear that. Um, the way the world views sex and the way they talk about sex in the Bible is two different viewpoints. Um, as we know, uh, fornication is um, one of the major sins. Uh, when you commit immorality, fornication, you sin, you're literally sinning outside your body. So, it, it, you know, Jehovah God looks at it as, um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty serious. I mean, it's, it's a pretty serious sin. I mean, all sins are serious, but um, for, uh, fornication is up there, you know. Um, it's pretty serious in his eyes because you know when you when you do that, you're sitting outside your body. So, um, if you want to serve God, if you want to try to live by Bible standards, then that's one of the things that you need to abstain. That you need to work on abstaining until marriage. And um, I know a lot of people say, well, why would God? And this is the question that I had. You know, um, and it's a it's, it's a good question. It's it's a valid question. A lot of people say, well, why would God give us a sex drive? you know, and, and give us all these hormones and sex drive if he doesn't want us to, but he wants us to wait till marriage, you know, we can't, you know. And so that's a good question. You know, like you, we're supposed to abstain until marriage and we're supposed to have all this control before marriage, but he gave us at the same time. And I've had that, I've had that same question and it's a very valid question. Um, but the Bible say that we're supposed to get, get our members in subjection and we need to get our members, which means our body um, parts, um, we need to get in suggestion. That's not easy to do. Uh, it, but if, if we're trying to serve God and, and we really want to do things to please him and we, we want to turn away, the Bible says, flee from fornication and turn away from it. And we really, really want to turn away from it. He will help us. You know, and we have to pray for Holy Spirit and, and Holy Spirit gives us power beyond what's normal and he will help us. He will keep us. But, you know, we can't do anything without God. I know there was a time where um, I tried, I made some attempts before um, I, I dedicated my, decided to dedicate my life to God. There was other times that I tried to, that I attempted to try to be celibate. And, um, well, my youngest son is, is evidence. <laughs> I call him my celibacy baby. Because <laughs> I was literally celibate eight months before um, I conceived him before I got pregnant with him. So when his father going to try to say that, uh, he, that wasn't his, his son, that my son wasn't his, I, I just laughed. It was hilarious because I was literally celibate for eight months before I even got pregnant with him. So I knew, I knew for a fact, 100% for a fact that, you know, uh, yeah, he was definitely his father, you know? <laughs> so I would laugh when he would try to say, uh, my son wasn't his. <laughs> It was funny. Um, sad, but funny. 
So um, there were times that I did try to abstain, um, but um, I wasn't I wasn't spiritually, you know, my level of spirituality, I, you know, I wasn't really serving God, and I wasn't, you know, my my spirituality, my spiritual my spiritual at the level of where I was at spiritually at that time was not very strong. And because it wasn't very strong, um, I wasn't really relying on God to really help me with it. You know, and your mind, you got to, you know, your mind has got to be, your mind, your heart, and your spirit has got to be in sync to do something like that. And so I tried to abstain before, but um, because, like I said, I was in the world and I really wasn't serving God. So I would do it for a time. I would do it for a few months and then I would have a weak, weakness and, you know, and so, um, but then it, it wasn't, it wasn't until I started getting serious about serving God that, to where I really got serious about serving God. And when I got serious about serving God and I started studying with the witnesses, but before I was celibate before I even started studying with the witnesses, you know. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, we can't do nothing without God. We can't do anything without him. We need it. We, we can't wake up. Do you know that we can't even wake up in the morning without God? When we wake up, we go to sleep and we wake up, he wakes us up. We can't do nothing without him. The Bible says that we can't even direct our own steps. You know, we, we, it's like we can't do anything without God. So when you try to abstain from sex and you try to do it, I try to abstain from sex and I try to do it, uh, without God, you know, um, I tried to do it on my own. It never worked. It never worked. I, I was never successful. Um, I would I would do it for a certain period of time, and then I would slip, you know, and then I would mess up. So it, it wasn't until I made the decision to totally dedicate my life to God, totally dedicated my life to God, and to, you know, when I first, before I started studying, you know, I was celibate. Then I was just kind of like just waiting on the right guy. But after I, you know, got serious, really serious, I said, well, I'm going to take that, take it a little, I'm going to go that extra mile and I'm just going to totally abstain until I get married, you know, because I knew I wanted to serve God, but I knew, I knew that I wouldn't be able to serve him unless I, unless I, like the Bible says, flee from fornication. So I knew that I, that was something that I had to get under control. And I knew that that was something that I had to do in order to, because you can't serve God and, 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 and be fornicating. You can't be out here committing immorality and you try to serve God. That's not that's not work. A lot of lot of lot of people try to do that. You know, they they try to serve God and then they try to but they're still having sex outside of marriage and that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You know, and, and if there's God's side, there's Jehovah God's side, then there's Satan's side. So you either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. So and, 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 and you, you, you know, you can't straddle the fence. Satan owns the fence. <laughs> so you don't God's side or you're on Satan's side. So in order to get on God's side, you know, of course we're going to fall short, you know, you know, but th there's, 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 there's sins that we commit daily that, you know, just being, just falling short as being human beings. But then there's, but then there's sins like immorality. Um, you don't commit those sins by accident you know, or just, just by chance, you know, you have to actually, you have to literally make a conscious decision to commit immorality. You have to literally make a conscious decision to go out there and to pick somebody or and actually do it. It has to be an actual conscious decision. So, um, that's, that's a whole lot different, you know, um, it's not, you're not just falling short. You have to make a conscious decision. They call that willful sin. You know, it, it, it is willful sin because you literally have to make a conscious decision. If I decided to commit immorality tomorrow, I would have to make a conscious decision to go out there, find somebody or you know, whatever, you know, which mm, I'm scared to do. It. I'm, I'm, I'm terrified of that, but I'm getting to that. Um, so it, it, is, it, it depends on where you're at in your life spiritually. It depends on where you're at um you know, some people ain't trying to serve God. Some people not trying to live by the Bible. Some people just kind of living day by day. They, you know, and so some people don't even care about what the Bible says. Some people don't believe in the Bible. So a lot of people, you know, you know, if they're in the world and they got that worldly mindset. I used to have that worldly mindset. I was in the world at one time and I had that worldly mindset. And so you, when I was in the world and I had a certain mindset, 
my mindset was differently different and my thinking was different than in what it is now. I have a completely different mindset now than I did when I was in the world. When I was in the world, I had a totally different mindset, completely different mindset. And of course, me, you know, me knowing me myself, I, I know the difference because I know the difference between, that's why when people want to um, bad mouth my religion or bad mouth the fact that I'm in my religion, since I've been in, in my religion, I've made a lot of changes in my life. And it's really sad when people can't see that, especially people that's close to me. It's really sad that they can't see the changes that I've made since I've been in this religion and the positive changes that I made. And then they they can't get over the fact that I'm in if they don't if they if they're against the religion and they don't like the religion, that's all they can focus on. They they're not stopping to think, okay, well, yeah, she has made a lot of progress and she has made a lot of changes since she's been um in the religion, but Oh, well, it is what it is. You know, I mean, it is what it is. People are going to think and believe the way they think. You know, you can't change people's mindset. But the thing is, it, it wasn't until I was ser I got serious about serving Jehovah God. When I got serious about serving Jehovah God and I really got serious about it. I knew that I had to not only abstain and practice of abstinence, but I had to stick with it. You know, and, and, and I needed his help in doing that because when you when you when you've committed immorality before um, and when you when you when you when you when you're used to committing immorality, it's not hard. It's not easy. It's not easy. I'm, I'm living testimony. It is not easy. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's easy. It's not easy. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's probably one of the hardest things that I had to do in my life, because especially if you were in the world and, and you were, you know, you know, because your body, your hormones is going to do what they do. And then the, and, and you're, you, what you have to do is you try to, you have to, you have to, you can't give in to, you know, just like if I want, if I want to eat a whole carton of ice cream, well, my mind says, well, okay, what's that going to do to your blood sugar? You know, I have to think about my blood sugar. I have to think about my weight because I'm trying to keep my weight down, trying to lose weight, trying to keep my blood sugar under control. So, I mean, comments just tell me, well, okay, I can't eat that whole carton of ice cream. I, I can have a, a certain amount of it and eat a certain amount of it and leave it alone. But I know I can't eat the whole thing because I got to think about my weight. I say, if I eat this whole thing, I'm going to gain weight or it's going to affect my blood sugar. So that's the same thing as, you know, sex. When you have that urge, I might have that urge to go eat the whole carton of ice cream, but then my mind's going to tell me, okay, I got to think about my blood sugar. I got to think about my weight. And that's what's going to help me to abstain from eating the whole carton of ice cream. I'm just using that as an analogy. So this is the same thing with sex. Just because your body, you know, you have the urge to have sex doesn't mean that you always have to act on it. And that's the thing that people in the world don't understand. They think that it's because they have the desire and they have the urge. Because, uh, like, yeah, your hormones are going to do what they do. But if, just because you have the urge doesn't mean you have to act on it. Now, what's going to keep you from acting on it is, is, is Jehovah God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's what's going to keep you from acting on those urges. And so, But you got to trust them. You got to pray about it. And you have to want, you have to want it. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen. Because God don't force himself on nobody. And so I knew that when I finally made up in my mind um, to really, really serve God and to really dedicate my life to God, I knew that that was a change that I had to make. And I had to be consistent with it. I couldn't just do it for a certain, few, a certain amount of months. And then, you know, and then it was a lot of, a lot of other factors involved in that. Um, I think it's important for single mothers to abstain because um, I know me as a single mother, um, when I first abstained, I almost can't remember. It's been so long, I almost can't remember no more. I think my old, my youngest son was, uh, see, I first started studying. He was about four. He was about four years old. My youngest son was about four years old when I became abstinent. And so um, he was about four years old. So at that particular time, I was thinking, well, um, because of all the diseases, and AIDS is the deadliest disease. If you get AIDS, you know, you might live a few years at best, you know, if your insurance is not good and then you out. So I was thinking about that. I was thinking about God 
you know, um, me lining up with, you know, and, and, and want to serve God. And I thought about diseases like AIDS and herpes. You know, a condom doesn't protect against herpes. If you get that stuff, you got it for life. A condom don't protect against that. And then AIDS, if you get that, you gone. You might, you live a few years at best, but after that, you gone. And so when I was out, when I wasn't a whore. I wasn't out here sleeping around with different guys. I, I, I wasn't like that. But, um, but even if you have sex with one person, you don't know where that person has been. You don't know how many people, people that this person has been with. So, you know, you're putting yourself at risk if you sleep with this person unprotected or whatever. You're putting yourself at risk of catching a disease. You're putting yourself at risk of having getting an unwanted pregnancy, an unplanned pregnancy. And so that, that I thank God I didn't get a major disease like AIDS or herpes, but um, I had I got an unplanned pregnancy. So I mean, there's consequences to everything we do. So when you when you go out there as a single mother and you commit immorality, you take a chance of getting AIDS. And if, 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 if nobody knew, the, the to statistically the AIDS rate is highest among Black women. Statistically, I don't know why that is, but you know. Um, so you're, you're putting yourself at risk of getting a disease like AIDS, herpes, uh, um, and, and stuff, something that AIDS is something that can take you away from your, your family, something that can take you away from your kids. So you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to get that. And then you don't want an unplanned pregnancy. And the reason why a lot of these young ladies, and I'm not judging, but the reason why a lot of these young ladies are, you know, having all these kids and they're not married is because they're not abstaining. They're not abstaining from sex. You know, and, 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 and they're not letting Jehovah God help them with that. And, and, they're, and they're getting involved with these guys. And they think, and it might be, they might have the right intentions. They might think it's a sure thing and it might lead to marriage. And then they have sex with a guy and then they find out that, you know, this is not who they wanted or it didn't work out. And the next thing you know, boom, they find out they're pregnant. You know, and, and next thing you know, they might end up with three or four kids, you know. And so that's why a lot of times women wind up with multiple children by different fathers and, and and so this that's why it's so important as a single mom and I know after I had my youngest son you know I I um got my tubes tied and I, at that particular time I wasn't particularly ready to abstain even though I did a few months after I had him but I knew you know I, I hadn't I hadn't made up my mind after that particular time and and so I got my tubes tied because I was like I'm not trying to have all these kids out here out of outside of marriage or whatever like that but then anyway fast forward a little bit I don't want to make this video too long um when I did the, when I did finally decided got serious about serving God and, and and really decided to really abstain be serious about abstaining um it, it was the best decision that I ever made in my life it was the best decision that I ever made in my life um uh, besides dedicating my life to Jehovah God. It was the best decision that I made in my life. And I don't regret it at all. I don't regret it at all. I feel good about myself. I, I have so much respect for myself. I know my worth. You know, um, I love it, you know. And and, and it's hard. It's, it's not easy. And I have my moments, but Jehovah God helps me through those times. And so he can, you can do it. It can be done. But you got to rely on God. You can't do it without God. And so single mothers do need to abstain because it, 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 until they find somebody that is worthy of their body, that's somebody that's going to marry them because you're putting yourself at risk of getting a, a disease. You're putting, and then they got uh, HP, HPV. Oh, I'm looking at this butterfly. It's so pretty. That's why I keep looking up. This butterfly is so pretty. Anyway, H, HPV, that leads to cancer. You can get cancer with that. And so... Um, it, it's it's no joke out here, ladies. It ain't no joke out here. And you, you your children need you. You need to be there for your children, and um, you need to not be putting yourself in a position to um, get pregnant, uh, unplanned pregnancy. Um, that causes a lot of problems, uh, particularly if you're not financially ready and all these kind of things. And and, and you don't want to get you get diseases. It's all kind of factors involved in that, and 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 then you can't you can't you, you, you're you're committing a major sin. Um, you, when you commit immorality, you're sinning outside your body, 
And so it's not, at the end of the day, ladies, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um, take it from me. It's not worth it. Um, I'm actually, I'm scared, actually, to be perfectly honest. Even if I wasn't a Christian, I, I, I would still probably keep on doing what I'm doing because <laughs> I'm scared. To be perfectly honest, I'm scared. It's, it's the, uh, all the diseases out here. And I think about the risk that I put myself in before when I was out there. And I, like I said, it wasn't a whole lot. And I wasn't, you know, sleeping with multiple people. But just it, all it takes is one infected person. And that's all it takes. It doesn't take a whole lot of people to infect you. It takes one infected person to infect you. And so I think about the risk that I put myself at in before. And it's scary to me. So the thought of me even doing that now is scary. And these men out here are nasty. You know, the most majority of them are nasty. And so, because <laughs> they out here sleeping around with these different women and and, and, and sometimes they ain't using protection. And, and, and girl, you got to protect yourself. You know, it's just, it's just at the end of the day, it's just not worth it. It's best for single mothers to abstain. Plus, you're setting a good example for your children. If they see you abstaining, of course, my two sons didn't pay that no attention. <laughs> they really didn't. Um, but it's still, particularly if you got little girls, you're setting an example for your children. Um, you, you can't, you can't, you can't preach abstinence to them if you out there committing immorality. You, you know, you can't. I couldn't talk about it if I was out there doing it. I couldn't talk to you about it if I'm out there doing it. So you, if you can't talk to your kids about abstaining if you're if you're not abstaining so you got to be able to practice what you preach if you abstain then you will be able to talk to your kids and encourage them to abstain i was able to talk to my two sons and encourage them to abstain because i was abstaining you know if i wasn't abstaining then it wouldn't been make no sense for me to try to encourage them because i'm out there doing the same thing you know so you can't be no hypocrite at the end of the day so you know you'll be able to Encourage your daughters to abstain, your sons to abstain, if you abstain. And then you practice what you preach, and you abstain. And so, it's just best for single mothers to just not do it. Wait until a man is worthy enough of your body. Let him be, I love that song by Beyonce. You love me, you put, put a ring on it. I love that song by Beyonce. Let him put a ring on it. Let him put a ring on it. If he wants your body, let him put a ring on it. And you'll feel so much better. Um, I'm telling you, you feel better. You'll feel cleaner. And, and it's the best thing for single mothers to do, in my opinion. And then you won't have no unplanned pregnancies. You won't be putting yourself at risk of getting a disease. And, and like I said, it's not. And if you want to serve God, that is the best way to serve him. That's the only way you're going to be able to serve him is you got to abstain. Because you can't serve God and, 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 and be out there committing immorality. It's, it just doesn't work that way. I know a lot of people and a lot of other Christian organizations think that they can do that. They, they think they can serve God and, and, and be committing immorality and shacking and all that. But uh, all they got to do is read the Bible. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do both. You got to, you gotta, if you're serious about serving God and you're really serious about serving Him, you got to, you got to abstain. You got to leave it alone. And that's what I did. And it's the best decision that I've ever made in my whole entire life, other than dedicating my life to God. So, and I feel good about myself. I, I, I'm not just, you know, I'm not just, these, a lot of, these men, most majority of them ain't even worth it. They ain't even worth it. They're not worthy of your body. And you got to know your worth, ladies. I cannot express that more. You have to know your worth. You got to know your worth. And, and, and there's sometimes you, that's what you got to do in order to learn your work. And I, when I'm when I'm staying and, and, and a few years into it, I really, truly knew my work as a woman. And now I'm like, honey, you ain't worthy. <laughs> okay. They're not worthy. I don't care how good it looks, how well they can use it or whatever. But I'm, I'm giving my own personal testimony, and I'm letting you guys know it can be done. I'm living testimony that can be done, because I'm going to be honest, when I was in the world, I enjoyed sex. I'm going to keep it 100. But I'm going to be a little candid on here. I enjoyed it, um, and, and it was hard for me to do it. I was a sexual person, and it was a little hard for me to do that, but 
with God's help, I was able to do it with God's help. And he has been keeping me all these years. He's the one. I'm not going to dare take all the credit. He's the one that's been Jehovah God. He's been keeping me all these years. And I, I feel good about myself. I feel so good about myself. I'm so proud of myself. And now you couldn't pay me. You couldn't pay me a million bucks to go out there to, to uh, have sex with somebody. Mm-mm. No. Um, even before I get married, uh, we, we, me, you know, we finna go to the clinic. Before I get married, we, we finna go to the clinic. I'm going to take a test, and he going to take a test, and I'll make sure that he clean, and I'm hit so he can know I'm clean, too. So, you know, never can be too cautious. So just something to food for thought for single mothers to think about. I think it's very important for single mothers to do that, um, for your children, to be there for your kids. It's just not worth it in the end, ladies. It's just not worth it. And then you won't be putting yourself in a position to get pregnant, have these all these unplanned pregnancies, and, and putting that extra burden on you of raising a, a children outside of marriage by yourself and you struggling. It just doesn't make sense, ladies. So I highly encourage single mothers to abstain. I encourage any woman, regardless of whether you're a single mother or not, to abstain into marriage before uh don't have sex outside of marriage abstain and wait until marriage and, and wait and, and 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 let that man prove that he's worthy of your body and then you you you'll be in good standing with god you know you know if that's what you want i mean i don't know if that's not what you want then keep i mean i'm gonna give you the ones you're doing but i think it's best for single mothers to do that you know it's best for single mothers to do it. So, with that being said, I got to get ready to go to the store. It's hot out here. Ooh, I'm burning up. So, give you some food for thought. Something to meditate on. Something to marinate on. Stay tuned. I got some more interesting video topics coming up. Please like, subscribe, and share my video. Um... And I need you to hit that notification bell. I am seeing my views go up a little bit. I need to need to keep on, you know, keeping on my subscribers. Keep on keeping on. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned. I got some more interesting video talks coming up. Peace and love. This is Sweet Jim.